In this video, I want to start working on the actual sway when it comes down to looking left, right, up, and down to where you'll kind of have a result similar to this. So that gives you kind of, it's not completely straight, so if you move left, you kind of turn the weapon left. If you look right, turn the weapon right, look down, points down, kind of up, and it's kind of like accelerating the lead a bit. And if you want to, you can easily reverse this direction as well, because that's what I did for the vertical. So when I look up, and initially the weapon dragged down. If I look down, then the weapon initially dragged up. So this way it's now reversed. So when I look up, weapon points up a bit. If I look down, it looks down a bit. So that's what we're going to get set up with right now. So let me go ahead and delete these real quick and plug them back in later. And I'm going to go ahead and close down the editor. So what all are we going to do? I've already commented out the move vector curve just so you could see it a little bit easier without having to worry about weapon sway or anything. So this is just for testing purposes. But basically, what we are going to be doing is we are setting it up so we are getting our current rotation, comparing it with our old rotation, and getting kind of the difference in speed between the two. And we're using that difference to interpolate. So actually, I can just control Z and you'll see the code. So we are getting our current rotation. We have our old rotation that we initially set. We get our new turn rotation by interpolating between our current turn rotation, which would be zero, to the new, which is, well, current rotation minus the old rotation anyways. And then we simply set it. So then we make sure we current old rotation back to the current rotation. So that way, on the next frame, we can get the difference between the two again. And then how I inverted the looking up and down is I just multiplied it by a negative number. In my case, I did negative 2 just because I wanted it to be a little bit more aggressive. So, to begin, we want some rotation, like some way to store the rotation. Also, we want sway location. I do not want that to be edit anywhere, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, so let's copy the U property because we want this one to be red. It's going to be an F rotator. And let's call it, uh, let's do turn rotation. This will be what we read inside of our animation graph. And then we want to have one more F rotator and call it old rotation. So old rotation, we're going to set in begin play. Again, only if our character is valid. And swipe over. There we go. So old rotation equals our current character. Get control rotation. I'm not 100% sure if control rotation is replicated or not. But we'll kind of have to figure that out. I'm assuming it is, but we'll see later on down the road. If not, we can just use our actor's rotation, and that'll be pretty close. Well, if not nearly exact, with the exception of the, uh, the pitch. So we may have to use our mesh rotation or something along those lines. I'm not 100% sure. Or maybe it's our get aim rotation. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, like I said, we'll just have to see. So now we want to get the kind of the difference here. So we have our variable, which was turn rotation. So we want to set turn rotation to equal the difference between the current rotation and the old. So turn rotation equals u kismet math library uh, interp2. Make sure it's for the rotator. And that takes in the target, or sorry, the current, which is turn rotation. And then the target. Now the target's going to be our current rotation minus old rotation. So f rotator current rotation equals pretty much this so it's going to be current rotation minus old rotation and it takes in delta seconds and then the speed which i'm going to do as i'll do like one and see if that looks good all right so once we have all that set we want to make sure we set old rotation back so we're going to set old rotation equals current rotation. So that way for the next frame, we can get the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and give that a try and plug it into our animation graph. Okay, let's reopen our animation blueprint. And here we have our sway location. We want to apply it after. So I'm going to drag out these two components to local, copy this transform modify bone, and just plug it back on in. So I want to leave the alpha always at 1, so we don't have to plug in anything there. But for the translation, let's unexpose it as a pin and set it back to ignore. 
And for rotation, let's expose it as pin and set it to add to existing. Because similar to what we're doing here, we add the sway location to our current sock our current locations for the bones. We want to add on to the rotation. So we're gonna add our turn rotation rotator that we made and plug that right on in. So let's compile and save and see. So look left, look right. And as you can see, it is turning as needed. However, it's very hard to see due to the, the slow interpolation rate. So I'm going to bump that up a bit. Let's go up to, I think I had it at like 2 last time. I don't remember exactly. Just kind of trial and error, find out what you like. But that's definitely better. Let's bump that up just to 3. And I like that a good bit more. Now, as you can tell, there is, if you go crazy with it, it goes really far. And that's something we can fix by clamping the value. So we can make it so it doesn't go past like this amount, for, for example. And same thing goes when you aim, it does the same kind of thing. And it moves the optic around a bit. So when we look up and down, we have a problem. As you can see, I'm looking pretty much straight up and down, but the gun is tilting left to right instead of tilting vertically. So that's because of our roll. So it's kind of inverted a bit. So what we have to do is set our, like I showed you earlier, our turn rotation dot roll. We want to set that equal to the turn rotation dot pitch. And that will replace our roll. Like so. However, we still have the issue of a slight rotation. So we're going to set our turn rotation dot pitch and set that equal to zero and that will get rid of our roll essentially so now i look wait did i get myself confused maybe i got myself a little confused here uh let's do out of curiosity i want to multiply it by like four and just see i might be wrong here that is interesting <laughs> okay let's multiply you by two then well actually because the pitch is taking the roll and eh, we'll see what does this look like all right so in retrospect we now have a samurai game all right yeah let me try to multiply that by three or four to make it aggressive. Okay, so that is the... Wait, no, because I still have that. I want to set you back to zero. I'm just trying to confirm and narrow it down. I feel a little bit lost here. So I can see vertical movement. It just seems a little bit off. Yeah, because now when I look down, the gun points. So it's kind of working as intended now. So is it pitch then that acts as the roll? Let's try and see if that doesn't screw it up. Oh, yeah, no, that does. Okay, so we want to make sure we let the pitch at zero. We could leave the pitch and just enable the roll so we don't have to multiply it by a crazy value because it seems like they kind of work a little bit together. So that might make it a little bit more natural. So I look up, the weapon kind of drags behind. So I want to invert this like I did before. So I'm going to just multiply it by negative two instead of just two. there as you can see I look up it looks up I look down it looks down kind of thing so that brings up the question what happens if I'd modified just the roll it just does roll that's interesting anyways we're gonna leave it like so and roll with it so we have left to right 
up and down. Up and down is a little more aggressive, so let's switch this to like 1.5 for the multiplier. Up and down. Yeah, it's still a little much, so we'll leave it at 1, so that way it's just kind of the same. Alright, so now we have kind of everything having a slight rotation as we move around. We have a little bit of sway as we go left and right. A little bit as we go forward and back just naturally. But we have that movement there to really make the gun kind of move all around. So, same thing. I don't think we're going to bother clamping it. As you can kind of assume. Like, this is me going as fast as I can left to right. And it's still... it. It's kind of difficult to get the gun to go all the way over there. And I want to increase the interpolation speed a little bit. So let's try multiplying by, or increase it to 4. And that should reduce the amount. Or, no, it doesn't. But it makes it a little more responsive in my opinion, which I like. But we get a lot more movement. So yeah, we are going to go ahead and clamp this. So I'll make the clamping portion in a video right after this. It'll still be released in the same day, if I remember anyways. So I might be wrong on that if I forget, but that'll just be a short little video. So where we will, like I just said, we're gonna clamp the rotation so we can't go past a certain point. So that's gonna be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.